the day to you, my lovely, cherished viewers. I welcome you to Thursday's edition of your most authoritative youth analysis program. Uh, my name is Mametra, and like I've said, this is your most authoritative youth analysis program. Today, I have a representative um, of people living with albinism in Ghana. And I want you to be a part of this show today because we are preaching inclusiveness in this country. Yes, I want you to send me a test on 053-1320-444. I have a gentleman. He is Kabu Nate Richard. He is Advocacy or Programs and Research Officer for Ghana Association of Persons with Albinism. I'll let you meet him after this breather. Don't go anywhere. from that short turn around let's not waste time let's get to meet richard richard how are you i'm fine okay. i'm fine i'm doing well how are you having your day so far sure well agrees everything is fine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so for the purposes of education um educate us explain to somebody who's never heard this thing before what does it mean to be a person living with albinism thank you for the opportunity and, mm -hmm. and good afternoon to our cherries viewers Mm -hmm. So, albinism is simply a genetic disorder as a result of lack or less melanin in the body, the mm -hmm. eye, and then the hair. So, this melanin is what produces the black pigment of our body. Mm -hmm. So, when you don't have it or you have less of it, it's likely for you to become a person with albinism. Oh, okay. Okay, so there are no external factors that causes it. It's like, can somebody be born not as an albi and as a person living with albinism, but as the person grows, it becomes part of them? Is that possible? No, no, no. Oh, okay. It's no. genetic. Yes, it's genetic. Okay. Both parents need to carry the gene. Oh, both parents. Yes. So the mother and the father need to be a carrier of the gene. So as a result of that, they are able to have a child with albinism. But then. When, both, when one parent have it, it's not possible. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Even if it's the father, because you see, the father is the person who produces the sperm, and then the sperm is what literally forms the baby. So if only the father has albinism in him, it doesn't transfer to the no. baby. It doesn't affect the baby in any no. way. It has to be both parents. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. okay. I didn't know that. It's I supposed didn't... to be both parents, both mother and father. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So with albinism, we have two types. Oh, there are types? Yes. Okay. We have the ocular and the ocrocotaneous. Okay. So with the ocular, you see someone who is having this hair color. Okay. But then the person... Is it white? Is it warm? What is the color of the <laughs> hair? I, I can't be specific because everybody has... Well, a lot of people have different, different... Okay. But what is the color of yours? <laughs> As you can see, I don't know. If it's that is brown or it, it's... It, it looks a little bit like um, a toned down yellow. Yes. Okay. Yes. So people even have ash. So going up my hair, my hair was ash after I remember the first it one. It was ash? Yes. Oh, okay. So when I remember the first one, and this is what, what I have. We have people who still have the ash ones, who have these ones, and other types. And then we have people who are dark people, black people, but then mm -hmm. they have this eye color. So you see my eye, and then they are dark, but they have this albinism eye. Mm. Yes. So that one too is the ocular type of albinism. And then... As I'm here, I am a continuous type of person with albinism because okay. I have from here to toe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So growing up, let, let me get into your childhood. When, at what point in your life did you realize that, look, I'm different from all these other children that I'm growing up with? And when you made that realization, how did it make you feel? 
So one thing was growing up, I didn't feel anything. I didn't even know anything about myself. And mm. then I have a brother who is like me. Okay. So I see the two of us as everything. We mm. are the world. So mm. Mm. it was growing up that my mom told me that, oh, your daddy's family, my family too. We have brother, our uncles and our aunties who have albinism. And so it was even new to me. I just say, oh, fine. Then I never know even there is any special conditions attached to it until I moved from the village to Accra to start ed education, and then that is when I got to know more about myself. Mm. Yes. Mm. But growing up, you realized that other um, kids, the kids that you play with in your area, had a different skin color, and you also had a different skin color. Did that not make you feel any type of way? No. Growing up, I think the kids around me were very, very friendly, and then we, we played together. I don't even think they know it's about my color being different from them. Mm. Cause we move together in and out. We do mm. everything that we want to do together. Mm. So I, there wasn't anything special. Mm. Until I came to the city, that's when I started to experience maybe some challenges. Mm. Yeah. I ask that because, you know, in Ghana, there are a lot of myths concerning people living with albinism. Certain parents wouldn't even allow their children to play with kids who look a little bit different. Have people ever been afraid to come close to you because you live with albinism? Oh, sure. For kids, yes. Because As you've grown, kids are rather yeah. afraid to come close yes. to you. So you might, there are kids who want to come and there are kids who are um, I mean, afraid to come close to you because they feel like you are different from them. Mm. So if some parents will go out and tell the child that the kakai is coming. So if a mother tell the child that the kakai is coming, why won't the child be scared? So those are some of the things. Mm. Yeah. But then uh, for me, it's normal. As time goes on, maybe the kids will become familiar. It's because maybe it's his or her first time seeing someone of that nature. Mm. Yeah. But what about adults too? You sit in tr public transportation, you go to public <laughs> hospitals, you use public restrooms. How do adults react to you? So, you see, <laughs> in adults' lives, sometimes I see to be hypocrisy or lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because how would you see your fellow human being and then try to avoid him because of his color? So sometimes you can sit in the car and people don't want even your shirt to touch them. Meanwhile, I pay for the transport. You didn't yeah. pay for me. You yeah. also pay. We are all in the car. The car is not for the car is not for me too. Mm. So why if the car is balancing, you don't want me to, I mean, to touch you. So mm. you know, I don't know where you don't want me to go. But then for me, I take it normal. Mm. But then it's a high form of discrimination. Mm. So mm. sometimes when I find that this for me, my own we have to educate you. But if I educate you, you feel to take it. Fine. If you don't want to take it, it's your own cup of tea. I won't force you. Mm. Yeah. I see. But now let's talk about hospitals. Do they treat you differently? Do they, like you've rightly said, do they discriminate against you? And what about workplaces too? Have you been discriminated against because of your, your condition? Do they think that um, you, know, you cannot do what other people are doing because you live with this condition? So with the issue of health, mm. now I lost a brother as a result of the neglection by the health practitioners. What? Because they feel like when they go close to him, they will, be, they will contaminate the... But this thing is not infectious. It's not contagious. Yes. Well, maybe I don't know what was their, pro their problem. So they refuse to... Medical students. They refuse to, I mean, treat him. So I lost him. But then it's because we didn't have much proof to prove that this was the reason why. But then my sister told me that when, since he took my brother to the hospital, not even the common nurse came to touch him and ask him what is wrong with you. They all come and open the door and they look at him and they go. On what? Train. So sometimes at the health places, the doctors are, or the nurses don't have the knowledge of these kind of issues. So Where did they get their health education from? Well, we are in Ghana, so I don't know. But then, now what we do is now that we now be preaching albinism all over, trying to educate them. So those who have some kind of perceptions, mm will change their mind for them to understand that no it's just a genetic disorder which cannot be infectious mm -hmm. it's not a disease so no matter how many times you touch a person with albinism you are not going to be affected your color is not going to change so imagine me are you sitting here have mm. you changed you are here no. about five minutes now no. ten minutes now you've not changed so you've yes. mugged me before you, yes you've, you've you <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm trying so hard to wrap my head around it because People who are in the health sector, who are supposed to have more knowledge, who are supposed to be more knowledgeable in this area, come open the door and 
live a sick human being because he lives with albinism. That is that is uh, so unfair. Yes. That's that is the yeah. highest so the highest there. level of so discrimination. There was a time my friend told that when she went to deliver, hmm. her son was a child with albinism. And one of the nurses she ran to go and call her colleagues come and look at so the woman has given birth to something. What? And that made the lady to feel so bad about going close to her child because the nurses at that instant has described the child as something. Meanwhile, he said, no more human being like you. Or... Yeah, so sometimes the ignorance is from our health. But, you know, so we are still trying to educate everyone. The education is not for just for kids or for adults. It's for mm. both everyone. Mm. And then now to the issue of employment. Yeah. So now, maybe let's say, okay, for me, I have a diploma in mm. TV and film production. Mm. Okay. I've gone to look for a job. I went with someone who has just certificate in TV and film production. Mm. And because I am a person with albinism, the person doing the interview will just say, okay, put your CV down, let me check. Okay, we'll call you. And then they'll take the other person. No questions no, asked. nothing. If I don't do the interview, all right, they'll tell you we'll call you. Now, the perception is they see you to be very weak and you can't do the work. Meanwhile, the person has not asked you to try the reason why you came. So before you entered, they have already concluded on you that, oh, this one, he can't do the work because, because of his condition. Meanwhile, you've not asked me to try or for the reason why I came. So people end up concluding on persons with albinism even before the interview day. So when you start, you send your application, everything, they'll take it and they'll tell you, call you back. I can tell you the number of applications I've submitted to people and then always I'll call you back. So I remember one time I submitted my application to a media house in Ghana here. I wouldn't want to mention the name. We should name and shame because that is discrimination oh, no, and I, you can I, sue them because in the yeah, constitution, everybody I, I is entitled to I wouldn't want to mention the name because, uh, because of one or two things. So when I sent my, that was I wanted to do internship and I submitted yeah. the details. Mm. They were like, we'll call you back. So I took a number and then I was like, I'll call to verify if. So I called it and it was like, the, la the lady was speaking to me. Uh, guy now, Oba, so if you know, of real, we can't tell them. Was you on the phone? I was on the phone, but then he was maybe trying to tell him the, so she was thinking maybe I didn't hear. My phone was a last speaker, so... That is so disrespectful. So I, I heard it. But then I took it normal because I'm used to that. And then if we are known that definitely there is discrimination. And so when it comes, you just have to accept it. You have no option. No, you, you don't... Richard, you don't have to accept discrimination because our 1992 constitution yes. provides for everybody. So, it includes everybody. So, you are not supposed to be discriminated against because so of your religion, is, your political affiliation, your so color. the issue is how effective is our constitution as a country? That is the issue. We have a lot of mm. action plan bills sent to parliament to approve so that we can also have our freedom. But then parliament is delaying on that. Mm. So what should that the constitution of Ghana is trying to protect us? But have you tested the laws? You know that the laws are in the book, but until you test so them, until have, you test them. We have said residents where the association has written petitions to strike. Mm. There is no proper outcome of it. So we are they don't still, respond or do they not get your letters? They might respond, but it won't be anywhere. So they won't I, follow the matter up to, yes. up to the end. Yes. So the issue is now we are working with the African Albinism Network to pass an appropriate and a rightful and a strongful act or plan bill, which will be submitted to parliament for parliament to pass that bill for, for persons with mm. albinism. You know, albinism in a way is classified as a form of disability mm. due to... Well, how are you people disabled? We are not disabled, we are not physically, but then we are visually impaired, partially okay. blind people. Oh, so oh, oh. Persons okay. with albinism are partially blind people. So I use two lenses. This one I just gave me to one. Mm. The one I, this one is just for working. I have a lens I use for my reading and writing. Oh, so okay. it make. So now imagine we are in a classroom, and I sit far back. Mm. When the teacher is writing on the other side of the board, mm. it's very difficult for me to for see. For you to see. Even when you put me in front of the board, sometimes it's very difficult for me to see. Mm. Yes. So persons with autism are partially blind people. Okay. Our vision is the main challenge to us. Okay. Th there are a lot of myths uh, surrounding that. Um, there are a lot of things growing up. There are a lot of things that we've heard people say that people living with albinism cannot see um, in the sun. As soon as they step in the sun, they will melt down. So are these things true? Can't, can you really not see when you walk in the no, sun? They are not true. They, in a way, they are myths. Let me say, when I was coming, I didn't take boot or Uber. Mm. I, I picked a public transport. 
I walk and then I light and I walk here. So I walked in the sun when I was coming here. So but what? Many people melt. People the result, the thing is, when you constantly walk in the sun, constantly, okay, it will affect you. That's where you get skin cancer. So constantly walking in the sun without putting on anything protective. So I'm in my long sleeves. Okay. This will prevent the sun from being part of my body. I apply sunscreen on my body, oh. my hair, my face. I have a cap. I came with a cap, right? Yes. I have my lens on. I'm good to go. Oh. You have to wear your hat, which is round. And then you walk on the sun. You are good to go. But you can't walk on the sun for long Bear without any protection. Yes, or you can stand in the sun for long hours. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, that is the issue. So that the issue is we should avoid staying in the sun for long. Or you can work in the sun as everybody do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I heard somewhere or read somewhere that you people need certain protective gears to go out with because yes. there are certain pros and cons when uh, people living with albinism are stepping out. So I, I, I thought it was also another myth because no. in you know, Ghana they talk a lot. For that one, it's true. That's why, I mean, my long sleeve, I'm in trousers. Mm -hmm. Every part of my body is covered, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have my lens here. Yeah. I put on my lens to reduce the, sun, the amount of sunlight that comes to my eye. Okay. I have my cap to reduce the amount of sun that hits my face. Mm -hmm. So with the, all this, I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. So that's why the protective things you're talking about, they are real. You need to wear them. Mm -hmm. The sunscreens are there, but the sunscreens are very, very expensive. I don't lie to you. I know. A sunscreen might probably be 250 CDs. Mm -hmm. So imagine if I'm a person with abilities and I don't do any work. I don't work. So because you've been discriminated at work work places. places. Yeah. How will I be able to afford that? What are the persons with abilities living in the villages? Mm. How will they be able to afford such sound care products? Mm. Yes. This lens, it took me like a lot of eye tests to get this lens. From one to two to three to four. Mm. You know how the procedure is? Mm. A, a lot of procedures. Sometimes you have to buy certain eye drops that are very, very expensive okay. just to correct the eye before you get a lens. Oh, okay. So there's another myth that um, people living with albinism have eye problems. Yes. And you have eye conditions. You some, some have pink eyes and other things like that. How true is that? Too? So the eye varies a lot, the okay. eyes. So that's how earlier I said we are partially blind people. Mm. Yes. What makes the eye to see? Since we don't have a line in the eye, yeah. we, we can't really see clearly. Oh. That's why we need a lens to support and our And these vision. lenses don't come cheap. They don't come cheap. They are not cheap at all. Very, very expensive. The lowest one might be, be this one, I didn't buy it from the hospital where I did my eye check. Mm. Because it was too expensive there. So I have to go through some other proce procedures to get it with the one I can afford. I was supposed to buy a telescopic lens. Mm. So what does that mean? It's this kind of lens that they have some kind of round things on there. You have to set it when you're about to work. So when you're about to read, you just do the settings yourself. Oh, okay. Yes. So that you wouldn't be changing yeah. into reading glasses Processing. and then walking yes. glasses. Oh, okay. It's very, very, very expensive. Okay. I couldn't afford it. I just have to get this one for my working and then get another one for my reading and writing. Mm. So if I'm not working, how will I be able to afford all these ones? Yes. So, albinism is a very, very expensive condition, condition. to have. Yes. Now, when it comes to skin cancer, mm. the, the, very, very expensive. In fact, when you have a little cut on your body and you have been exposed to the sun, the sun hits it continuously. Mm. It starts inching you. You develop skin cancer. When care is not taken, yeah. you might not be able to survive it. And most of our colleagues have, we've lost them through skin cancer as a result of not being able to afford the medical bills. So one thing we also appeal to government is to include our lens, our mm. sun care products, and then skin cancer treatments mm. on the National Health Insurance Scheme. At least, if it's not free, part payment, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to afford some treatment. Because if I'm not working, and my parents are able to support me in a way mm. to provide a sunscreen, but they can't buy or oh, come up to my because one sunscreen you need to use, maybe it shouldn't take you more than a month to finish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sunscreen bottles are not that huge, huge. and they are expensive, they are costly. Yes. You need to apply it morning, afternoon, evening. Anytime you are going out, mm. there, is, there is before and after sunscreen that you need to use. So when you're about to go in the sun, there is a one you need to apply. Mm. When you come back and you bath, you need to apply one so that you cool the body down from. I see. Yes, so they are all expensive. So this one, or if I don't work, I, I can't really 
Yeah, I can't afford them. You can't survive? Yes. I see. As a person living with albinism, what, what are some questions that people have thrown at you <laughs> that you find to be very, for lack of better words, dumb to uh, ask you? Uh, they say you don't die. They say you don't die? Yes. Someone Where did they get that from? <laughs> So now, mm. most people believe that. So my friend told me, so my friend said, his mother told him that Okofanoti was a person with albinism, so he disappeared. That is why. <laughs> so people with albinism will disappear. disappear. And then there was a person that people said you don't see posters of persons with albinism. Okay, dead posters? Yes. Oh, oh okay. No, but but the, why, why do they want to see them? Uh, why they, what are they looking for them for? I don't know for them. No person with albinism, we really live long. There are people who take care of us for ourselves. And mm. so, we have very long life life spans. Span. Oh, yes. okay. But then, yeah. when people with abnusing who die, I have lost my brother. Mm -hmm. Now the issue is people believe that our body parts, our body produce magical powers and also can be used for money rituals. What? So when, let, for example, someone with abnusing die and then yeah. he's going to bury a group poster. People will come to the front just to know whether I go to bury the bury person. So they will go and so take that they will the go I see. Take the body for their spiritual means and so most likely the process are not being done but it's in the instance that we do so now i don't know if you remember there was a lady who was knocked down by a car mm. at a west african senior high school was mm. mm. that lady was a young girl with abnusism so she died so what food has person if you go to uganda malawi other yeah. places in africa mm. there are persons with abnusism who have been murdered who have been killed who have been attacked and killed by people mm. so there is no proof that person with abnusism doesn't die so now let me give another scenario here yeah for example, I stay in Abilene here. Yeah. I get people threatening me. I'll kill you for money. I'll kill you for money, Richard. Continue. Really? They, they, they so, say it to your I face? I know. I'm trying to give a scenario. Okay. So because of fear, maybe one night, I'll just pack my things and relocate to somewhere far from mm. the threats. Mm. And then they won't see me again. Their perception is maybe I'm dead or I've disappeared. You've disappeared. Ooh. No, I've run for my life. Okay. Or if I'm in Abilene for six years and yeah. then you didn't see me again. It's either maybe someone has attacked and killed me mm. secretly and no one knows about it. Mm. Or I have relocated. Yes. Okay, just like every other human being mm. relocates it's from time to time. time. But yes. once it is a person living with albinism, mm. they, they have this perception that, that you've disappeared or... <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> so, and that person, someone will come and ask you that. He said, you don't go to the loo on Fridays. Why? I don't. I don't know. I what don't. is so special about Fridays that you can go? I can't really tell. Sometimes it sounds funny, but sometimes it's very serious for me because I have come, I've read a lot, and so when you ask me these kind of questions, I will. You don't find them offensive. The way you are smiling about it, you don't find them I don't offensive. Find, because I want to abuse it and then educate you about it, so I have mm -hmm. to accept it in a way that I will educate you. Mm -hmm. Yes, but then initially when I was not known to this, because when you ask me those kind of questions, maybe I will. I will end up arguing with you. Yeah, because I, I, I am not a person living with albinism, but I find it very disrespectful and, you know, very infuriating. Like, you should mind your business. Nobody yes. is asking you why yes. you also have your skin color or why you are oh, living yes. with your condition. So, this is another form of racism. But oh, yes. people feel like it's something different from racism. It's mm. never different. Now, there was a friend of mine who went to Italy, I think, last mm. two weeks. Then when she came back, she was like, hey, Richard, when I went to Italy, what did you do to me? Mm. If I ask this one for help, he say, hey, don't touch me. Mm. If I call this one, you just see me coming here. I was like, oh, so now you understand why we in Ghana here are complaining that you, the blacks, are racist. Yes. yes, we are racist amongst ourselves. Yes. yes, but when you go there and they try to do something similar to you, mm. you, you try to, I mean, prevent yourself or come back and say that the whites are racist. Mm. This is a very from God. People are being discriminated to the sense that they are banished from their community. Because of their Say that again. People are banished from their community. In Ghana. In Ghana. Are these people aware that the 1990 constitution protects everybody in this country? You no have way. your freedom to movement. They you have way. your right to move anywhere in this country that they you know. want to go to. They say that tradition doesn't allow persons with abilities to stay with them. What? So, if you don't try and you go there, you see that you come back dead. Uh, you will not come back. Or you know, maybe you come back with some kind of beatings. We will have to escape. Which, which towns? Uh, this is so bizarre to hear. So, Akumufia is one. They think Abasi and there's a town called Mori. You people should be ashamed of yourself for treating yeah. people like that. What? 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 Yeah. So, so something similar to when I go to marry to a lady who is coming from such places, you need to be very careful. 
And so you need to ask, you need to do a lot of research, research before you're going to marry someone from such places. If not, maybe one day you go there to visit your in-laws and then you will never come back again. Yeah. So they are there. People I believe see. that when you have a child with albinism, just put the child in the hot sun. The child will become dark and then you are good to go. But it's not true. You can not, not take and cure albinism. No okay, there's medicine, no cure for there's no cure, no medicine, no injection. Nothing can cure albinism. So some people believe that there, there are melanins that you can pop into the people to change it, it, their, it, their it, skin. It, it, won't, it won't work. As there be a proof, no scientific proof has shown that you can, I mean, change someone with albinism to a dark person. There's no proof. You end up losing your life. Because that is how God wants to make you. Mm. Bible says that God made man in his own image. Yes, so nobody can say whether God is fair or God is dark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't know. What if God comes and he's a person living it's, with albinism? Uh -huh. So, if you read the Bible very well, I don't know, if you read the History Bible or yeah. the Theological Bible, the bigger, the bigger mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. the Bible describes King David as someone with white hair, mm -hmm. someone with brown eyes. Mm -hmm. and the, the definition the Bible gives to King David, it will tell you that King David was someone with albinism. albinism. Yes. So uh, it's a challenge I told to people to always go and read and study. Maybe if they didn't see the correct, you should come and ask me. Mm. Yes. You, you, you are telling Ghanaians to go and read. To if you want read. to hide something from a black man, put it in a book, <laughs> and you are telling them to go and read. Go read. <laughs> Which, go that read. is interesting. Go Everybody read. walks around, around with what they've had. Yes. But because of your condition, has it prevented you from, you know, being in a relationship with um, somebody who is not living with albinism? Um, it will depend. So for me, like this, I have because I understand you have a girlfriend. Oh, who says so? <laughs> <laughs> that is what I'm told. That hey, you have a very beautiful but, girlfriend. But this with an allegation, though. <laughs> allegation. I'm, I'm still saying. Your girlfriend is watching you. Know? Oh. Uh, what? Uh, is the person who is? I don't know what the person is talking about. So, okay, my producer says you have four girlfriends, and not just one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. But so, is it true? So on your phone. Oh, so uh, can you can you open your phone for me to check? Oh my phone. I'm on my, I'm on my phone. I have my own picture on my phone. No, so, not your wallpaper. So you've not saved anybody's. No. You've not saved no, anybody's no. name as my love, honey, sweetheart. Oh no. <laughs> I <laughs> love my phone is my senior sister. Uh, I see. Yeah. I see. So the issue is that sometimes the lady might accept you, but when you go to the family, mm. the family will be like, "Into who calling now? One who will be away now? Who now wouldn't have a fear?" You see, mm. there, is, there is instance where the lady too might not be. Mm. So there is instance where the guy is not with albinism, but then the, the guy has a lady with albinism, and then the family will say no. So, for instance, I have I have one relationship, second one, all went all okay, but then I decided to end it because of personal reasons. Why did then, you end it? And, oh, I think by then I was so young, and then mm. I I need to focus on myself. That's why I ended it. We have to talk and understand each other. Mm. <laughs> And we are still friends. And then the second, there was a third one I wanted to go in, but then I have a second. So I told the lady that, oh my dear, I want you to ask your mom or your dad mm -hmm. that this is the person you are going out with. What do they have to say? Is the family okay with that? Mm -hmm. So the next day she came back and she didn't want to talk. But then I forced her and she said that the mother said the family don't accept persons with albinism. And then it, it was no new how, thing. How did that make you feel? Uh, and that's is bad. Is bad. By which it was a way for me to get evidence for what some of my colleagues have been saying. Mm. Yes, that they have been rejected by their ladies' family or their guys' family. Mm. So I also want to put myself in that shoe and yeah. see that is it true or is. So I asked her, and she told me that, oh, this is it. And then I was like, oh, okay, fine. We are good to go. Mm. Maybe we are not meant for each other, but if we were meant for each other, no matter the relationship how, would have stayed. stayed. Yes, it would have stayed. Yeah. So but, there's, there are still discriminations. Yeah, Richard, you you clearly stated that um, this condition is hereditary. Yes. Have you ever sat down to wonder, or have you ever been afraid of passing this um, condition to your children? Looking at what you've gone through, are you scared? Does it scare you? Is that why you really don't want to start a family? No, 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 no. I, I am very proud of myself. I won't lie okay. to you. I, I love who I am. That's good to and hear. And if there should be any option for me to change myself, I will never do it. No wow. amount of money will convince me or nothing will convince me to change who I am. I, when you go to my Facebook page, I write, I am a proud person with albinism. You saw my Facebook, Facebook. page. Yes, I, I love who I am. You know, it taught me to push harder. It taught me not to give up. It encouraged mm -hmm. me to do things that people with normal condition cannot do. Mm. 
So, for example, in my family, I'm the highest person who has acquired education. Mm. That's, that's what my condition. Mm. Even though someone who has maybe say has gone through a lot of big, big opportunities, I, I can stand and say I'm the one. That's not my condition. So, what you me from doing what anyone can do? Nothing. So, I'm a proud person with albinism. I love myself. That is why, and this is the same way every person with albinism loves his or herself. Mm. Mm. Despite the challenges that we go through, we still love who we are. Mm. And then I don't care marrying a person with albinism to have a children with albinism. Okay. That is what if God has for me. Mm. But then if God should get married to someone else who is not with the condition, I have no say. Mm. But I, do, you, do you find some of the women living with albinism discriminating against um, their fellow male people who have their albinism? Oh, for that, no. For that, for that no. Okay. It, it's, it, I have not experienced and I don't think it's, it's within you. Okay. When you come to even meet us sitting or having programs, you feel like maybe we are... Oh, you have programs? Yeah. You feel like maybe we are brothers and sisters from... The same family. mother. Okay. Yes. You don't know who is... Unless we tell that, oh, this is from here, this is from here. Mm -hmm. So we, are, we have about estimated about 3,000 persons with albinism living in Ghana. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. It's not a fixed number, but then they are still... Because I read somewhere that in 2015, you guys were about 5,800 thereabouts in Ghana. Yeah. So. so we are more. Mm. We are more. So one thing we also want to do, the Ghana Statistical Service and mm. the census team, when it comes to census, they should always count persons with albinism different from the general public so that we will know the number of persons with abusing living in Ghana. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. So in Ghana, what would you say are the major challenges that people living with albinism face in this country? So we've talked about health already, right? Yes, we've and talked then, about uh, health. traditional challenge and discrimination. Yeah. So one thing is about education. I think I mentioned earlier on. Mm. But let me hit up on education again. So now the font size of our textbooks they are very, very small. I think mm. they are nine or ten. Yeah. At least it should be increased to 12, 12 14. 13 years and above for mm. us. Because even with this lens, still make vision difficult. I yes. see. So we still need the font size of our books to be larger. And then our teachers, mm. teachers, we still want our teachers to be educated. We are still educating our teachers. Because most teachers don't understand the condition. And so mm. they end up punishing the kids wrongly for what they don't know. So now, let me give you a scenario. Go yeah. back in the SHS. I wouldn't mention the school I attended. Please do. <laughs> Please do. I want to know. Why did you attend senior high school? <laughs> so, go back in the SHS. Yeah. There was a time that my teacher was writing. Our blackboard is very long. Mm. So he was writing for this side of the board. And mm. then I was sitting here. Even though I was in front. But then when he was writing from, it was very fast. So I need to strain my eye yeah. just to get to what he's writing. He thought I was sleeping. So he threw a marker at me without asking me anything. So he thought I was sleeping. He didn't know my condition. He didn't ask me anything. But when I was writing, I just have to put my head on my table, table and I'll be writing. It's not that when you feel it's like sitting to write, you have to yeah. put your head on the table. Yeah. So that was what I was doing. I was writing. Yeah. But he feels like maybe I was sleeping. Now, so for the classroom, the person who are not supposed to sit at the Behind. back. They're supposed to sit in front. In front, they should move their desk close to the board when it comes to writing in front of the board. Mm. Right from the board, you need yeah. to, I mean, sit in front of the board so that you can get the questions. Yeah. Yes. So sometimes when you don't get this help, you need to get a friend who understands you in the way to help you. Mm. So I, let me say with this, I want to say thank you to my very good friend. His name is Eugene Butchie. Mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate him for helping me to come this far. Eugene was one of the friends who can sacrifice his time to write for me in a book, for me to copy into my okay. book and then write. So when it okay. comes to class tests, midterm exams, I have to always have to have two papers. If it's to go to written on a four sheet of paper, I need to buy two for him to write the questions for me. Because you can't see the ones they, they've typed. No, that one they type. You know, my midterm and they write on the they board. They write it on the board. Yes. And then he had to write them in the book for me to really write it on my question paper before I'm able to write. Sometimes the teachers will beat him or will lash him for doing that for me. Because, because they, they will feel that probably you guys are trying to cheat or something. Yes, but that is not the answer. Yes, we don't even understand you, okay. But Eugene never give up. He, he, he does that for me. He always do that. There are a couple of friends who have been there who, who does that for persons with albinism. You know, I remember there was a time eh, we had a midterm exams and then the question was about 10 or 20. And then I was able to manage to write 10. I know and I always to see it myself and wrote it. Mm. There is a good but at, at the end of the day, I was able to talk the class. Mm. With the other by way too. Mm. 
So it tells that if I'm able to write all the questions, I would have... You would have scored better. better. Yes. So there's nothing that prevents us from anything. The only thing is that our site is a problem for us when we come to the classroom. Mm. So when the teachers understand that, and when I went to... So in my basic school, there was this teacher who called Mr. Kinsley. Normally when he's coming to class with his questions, he writes on paper. When he's done the question, he gives it to he me. He gives it to you. And then it helped me to improve These are the type of teachers, teachers that we should be producing yes. in the country. Yes. Because so, I'm putting myself in your shoes because I have a condition with my eye. I can't see from far. And so I'm, I'm only imagining and picturing how difficult it, it, is, it has yeah. been for you to go through education yeah. with this condition. Because... I can't see from far. When I sit in front, I strain my eyes and I know the pressure that it puts on the eye yes. and that worsens the situation of the eye. And so, yes. Yes. I, I'm, I'm, goodness. There's also another myth that because, um, you know, your condition affects your eyes and your hair, it affects your brains also. And so, people <laughs> with albinism do not climb higher in the education ladder. And you are debunking that right now. Sure, 100%. It's never true. Okay. So, you know... Silip Keita is a Malian musician. Mm. He's a person with albinism. You have footballers who are with albinism. Uh, uh, what's the name? I have the name. Even, you know of Moses Fuamweni? Yeah. We're not lawyer in Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Joshua Alabi. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people. We have persons with albinism who are auditors in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm a sound technician, you know already. Yes. Yeah. So what makes, what makes you think that the issue is because of discrimination and stigma? Mm. Sometimes you are not able to go to school because when you go to school, people make fun of you. People wouldn't even want to you sit close to, to you. you. So now, when I come to the class and you make fun of me, how will I feel comfortable to come back come to school back the to next school day again. to learn? I'd rather go and sit at home because my family will accept me the way I am. Mm -hmm. So it's not that most people are not that educated. Or they go to school at, at uh, old, other ages. Mm -hmm. When they are grown, that's when people are able to encourage them to go back to school. But when you talk of intellectual or intelligence, I'm telling you. You you won't meet a person with a person you beat. Mm. <laughs> and you, you beat him or you pass by him. Mm. We are very smart people. We are very smart despite our challenges. Mm. So we have persons with a person who are nurses in Ghana. Who are caterers. Mm. I have a whole lot. We drive. We do everything. Everything you... Your condition doesn't stop you from doing normal life The only activities. thing that we can do is maybe work on the sun. Okay. If the sun is done, you can do every work. Mm. I can do construction work. That's why the sun is not hot. Let's say we are doing screening in this room. Mm. And we are not in the sun. Nothing prevents me from doing I can do it. Okay. My hand will look, get broken. Mm. My, I will do everything. Mm. I can do everything. Mm. So talking about the challenges, we've mentioned traditional, we've mentioned education, mm -hmm. we've mentioned health. What are other challenges that are affecting you? So I think the challenge is our constitution, our recent regulations in the country are not supporting us enough. How so? Because when you have an issue or someone attack a person with albinism, mm. it's very, very difficult to, I mean, get a support from the government. The police will ask you for so many things and at the end it's become a foolish case. So many things like what? If you don't have evidence, how will you be able to say, say this person attacked me? Now, you make a case that, oh, there was a kidnap issue here okay. where they want to attack a person. They only, they only come and ask questions, questions, and then later on they leave. They don't follow through. They don't follow through. So that is, our constitution is not helping us. The right that need to give us to deserve as a person with abnism, we are not giving that right. Mm. So we, have, we, have, we don't have the freedom of movement. And that you move in fear because you can even order Uber, okay? And you get to your house, you alight, and then someone is coming after you. I think there was last, yes. somewhere last year, a friend of mine, we went to do some projects somewhere there. She ordered Uber. So she when she goes, someone changes. So she has to go and run and pass somewhere else where she gets home. You see? So with this one, even if you go and say, it, how will those... And our government is not supporting us because they are not interested in issues concerning albinism. How, when was the last time you heard parliament mention anything concerning albinism? Nothing. It, is it be, do, do you think it's because you don't have representation in parliament house or, or because your number is not that huge? I don't think it's supposed to be. A, it should be about a number, or it's supposed to be a representative. Since we are in the city, we are citizens of Ghana. Mm. Ghana need to stand for. Ghana need to fight for us, no matter how. Imagine someone being racist. Uh, as you got the footballer that people threw banana at. Yeah. That everybody came and supported support yeah. him. So imagine it happening in Ghana. A person with albinism were murdered to death. The, it's only come in the news. Oh, a young girl with albinism has been killed by a strange arm robber. Mm. And that is it. it's a kind of foolish case. No one will follow it. 
no matter what report you do, it won't go anywhere. So it's like, but that's wasting our, I mean, so it's a waste of time. So that's why I'm saying that we are also fighting hard that government to try to put things in place so that mm. present communism also have the right, the liberty, and that fundamental right that every citizen in Ghana needs. Everybody is entitled to, to enjoy. It's, it's enshrined yes. in chapter five. The only thing maybe you enjoy is when you are going to election and it will say, well, you don't want to allow you to join Q. Apart from that, that doesn't make us comfortable. We need mm. something better. Our health is something we need. Then when you take the UN human rights laws for persons with disability and persons mm. with disability, mm. it states that every person with disability has the right to live, the right to education, mm. the right to movement, mm. the freedom for free health care. But in Ghana, it's not so. In fact, when you go to hospital, the kind of money you spend to get just one treatment, I tell you, if you go to the next day, you'll be discouraged to go again. You used to go home and die with your condition. I remember when I was taking this lens, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real story. I you went have to, to save up. You I have to save up. Uh, hmm. I, 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 I really went through a lot. In fact, but then I got to the last doctor I got to, he was very kind and he assisted me. He told me that if I want to fix it, I'll just spend money, but then he would just give me a lens that to assist me. Mm. So he personally bought some eye drops for me with his own money. And he told me that I, I should go to a different place and get a lens. So he showed me where to go and get this lens. Because it turned out the lens here are very, very expensive. And mm -hmm. since I said I don't have any work doing, I might not be able to afford it. So he bought about four of the eye drops for me. Too. And when I'm done using it, I should just come. When I'm coming, I should call him directly. Mm -hmm. So he'll just pick me from the entrance and then do the final test for me. And he give me a receipt to wink and get the lens. Because you know that I can't afford it. So if government was supposed to be taking care of all these issues, I don't think we'll come in the city and be making a lot of allegations, mm -hmm. trying to debunk means about people mm. and stuff. So, so, so now my final question is that um, how do you think, what measures should be put in place to ensure that people living with albinism live a free, comfortable life in this country? So the final answer is one, there should be kind of, they should, they, we are still educating, there should be friendship, accessibility. Mm. To everything, we should be allowed to enjoy their rights. Everybody's enjoying. Mm. Government should put strict measures in place that anyone that discriminate against a person with disability mm. or a person with disability should be put on the right path. Mm. Should be prosecuted. Yeah, yes, mm. and I think when those things are put in place, people will find it difficult to. I mean, personal, personally, I've been attacked by people. Someone threatened to kill me, but then it wasn't that wouldn't enough so I, I didn't but I, but I reported into two military friends of mine mm. and then they told me the third time I should just inform them but then he never you must always be living so you you are you are working in life as if you're stepping on eggshells you yes. know so yes. scared to lose your life, life. at any yes. point in time it, it shouldn't be like that can't. yes so if government should put those measures in place yeah people who go against person government should be prosecuted I think people will be in fear to so the way, if you go against someone who is having HIV AIDS, yeah. you are being prosecuted. Being asked, yes. like to pay some amount of money to yeah. compensate the person. If those things are put in place for persons with abnormalism, so I think it will put people in their right order and their mm. right path. Mm. Mm. Are there any suggestions that you would like to make to the government or to NGOs? You said you are working with um, an NGO now or a, a group now yeah. that is helping people with albinism. Tell me about that group. So it's also a, it's all the person with albinism groups in Africa who mm. has come together. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they ask as a mother body to assist the countries to make their laws and regulations so that they can be forward mm. to their parliament house to work on them for them. Okay. Yes. But then I also want to tell people, government and NGOs, that mm. they should come in support of person to You know, it's very difficult to get support mm. from NGOs because they, in the way they don't see anything wrong with your condition. Okay, mm -hmm. but then for we the people, we know who what you are going through, yeah. and so we always appeal to them that they come to our aid and support us in whatever we will do. So financially, we need support to be able to organize programs for our members. Our members who are unemployed, we want to put them to skill training, so at least at the end of the training, they can also get something to do. Mm. Maybe the person can for the training, and then the person go back to stay at home without any capital to study what he or she has come to mm -hmm. It's become a waste of time. Yeah. So we always um, 
encourage NGOs to come to our aid and support us, government to come to our aid, government to put measures in place that will also have this right to live. Mm. In fact, the living is very, very important. You have the right to, to live. live. Yes. The, the thing is that the laws should be implemented yes. for you to be able to live freely because yes. you have the right to life. Sure. You have the right to life, sure. Richard. Sure. So I'm sure a lot of people are watching you this afternoon. I'm sure some of your members are also watching. What do you have to say to them? We are leaving. So my final words is, yeah. persons with abnism are your friends. Mm. We don't have any magical power. Mm. We don't possess any spiritual power. Mm. We die. We do everything. The only difference is we don't have melanin. That's why we have this pale skin. And then when you come contact close to us, you're not going to be affected by anything. Come close to us. We are your brothers and sisters. We are your friends. Mm. I mean, we are like the way every normal one is. And I want to say that whenever you see a person with amnesia, don't try to feel pity on them, but try to accept them like one of your brothers and sisters. Mm. And we are good to go together. Show us love. Show us care. Like the way we show you love when we see you. Because we don't discriminate against blacks. Mm. We accept all blacks. Whether the person is even not having arms or whatever. Mm. We accept them because we see them to be our brothers and sisters. So why would you... Oh, you rather be against us. Mm. And then we also want to tell government that we have made a lot of, I mean, proposals to them. Mm. Government should hasten their, and fasten their belts and come to us. If not one day, we'll walk to the parliament house to demand what mm. belongs to us and to demand what is right mm. of us. Mm. Thank you so much, Richard, for coming. I, I am so <laughs> grateful that you came. I want to show people that when I touch Richard, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing going to happen to me. Thank you so much for coming. And Thank I hope too. that the government has really heard you people. And these laws should be enforced. I am concerned about it because people are being banished from their towns and then you are scared for your life. It is a, it's a big concern. And yes. I hope that you know they listen and then they work around the clock for you guys. All the best. And sure. I so think you've done this for yourself. Can I give my contact in? Sure, you can. Meeting. So, sure. in case you want to reach the Ghana Association of Persons with Albinism, mm. we are looking at the Accra Rehab Center. Mm. And then you can call 0556 315 071. 0556 315 071. It's my personal number, so you can call for mm. anything. Okay. S say it again, but slowly so that people can pick it. 0556 mm. 315 071. Mm. 0556 315 071. Okay, Richard, thank you so much. I'm sure all the pretty ladies will start calling you this afternoon. <laughs> so the four girlfriends you have will now be eight girlfriends. It doesn't cost anything to be kind. Be kind to all walks of people, everybody that you meet out there. Be kind to them because it costs nothing to be kind.